Thursday, Junior. That's what I call Thursday. Uh, I'm here with another one of my good friends, uh, Jeremy Rodruck. Uh, Jeremy, you and I have had the opportunity to work together uh, for I think maybe a handful of months for sure. Uh, and uh, I love what you teach because I think you you teach something that, and we're going to deliver a lot of value here in this video. So plug in, put your seatbelt on because uh, we're going to talk about something. Uh, Jeremy, I, I would almost, I would bet money that the person that's watching us right now uh, is impacted by the topic that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, and that is, you know, kind of our upbringing, our background, our childhood. Um, there are issues and things that happen that, that, that form us, that help us create who we are today. A lot of those things are great. Some of those things are not real great, right? And sometimes as kids, we also have maybe some traumatic type stuff that, that might happen, right? And so all of these things shape how we show up um, in our relationships and so forth. And they they help shape how we show up in our business, how we show up in our relationship with money. And so that's what we're going to talk about. And then, uh, Jeremy, you've uh, put together a really cool masterclass where you kind of go, you dive a little bit deeper on this subject. And it's um, super, super valuable stuff. Jeremy, would you mind kind of just like introducing yourself and like the work that you do? And by the way, the website that I've got on the screen right now, jeremyroadruck.com slash wealth. Um, Jeremy's your free masterclass. Um, you don't have to pay anything. Just register, start watching. Um, and so if you're interested in this topic, um, you'll learn a lot about yourself. That's for sure. <laughs> Jeremy, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, feel free to, you know, kind of talk about you and your work. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Josh, thank you for the opportunity. And yeah, this is like, kind of like why I was born. Like, I'm lucky to be able to say that and to have that sense of clarity because, yeah, I had a, a rough start. I had a couple of, of things happen, unfortunately, at a very young age that took me sideways. And I spent about 20 years angry, survival mode, defensive, and I didn't know who to trust. I didn't know what I could trust. So I had to like figure everything out for myself. And it gave me a very unique perspective because I was smart enough not to like mouth off and get in trouble because, you know, <laughs> then you, you, you get put in your room. And back in my day, we didn't have all the phones and cells and all the everything. So back in your room, like I had a, I had a record player. And that was it. And so like, you know, you're bored and dying slowly of just boredom. And I learned really fast, don't get caught. Or <laughs> when you do get caught, take the spanking, it's faster. And then you get to go play. Yes. And, and so I was- Always pick the spanking, get it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and, and my parents feel bad. I can leverage that later. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Total utilitarian. You know, it was like, I yeah. didn't have a lot of like, I didn't, I didn't like, I, I already knew I was worthless on some level. And so there was a lot of, of stuff that just didn't work with me. And so I struggled for a really long time because what people say, what people do and what people mean, they're all different things. And why is that? And so I had to kind of like figure that out on my own. Cause again, I didn't know who to trust. And so now at this point, I've got more than 40 years in the personal development world, you know, researching a variety of frames of reference and contexts and religions and mindsets and trainings of all different kinds. And over two and a half decades professionally helping people to master their mindset, learn to assert and respect boundaries, create, like, create the life that they want to live from the inside out by getting their mindset mastered. And that's really the key. I've, I've helped people in their relationships, in their business. I've helped them with their own sense of self-worth, their fitness, like all these different areas are really, really cool. But what really gets to the core of all of it is your BS, your belief system. Mm -hmm. And like you said in the intro, you know, we as kids, we have no filters. And so we look at our parents as the fonts of all wisdom and knowledge for a certain period of our life, whether that's good, bad, or sideways, whether that was valid or not, we just accept it. And that becomes part of our unconscious frame of reference. So I, I don't like the word normal because normal is just a setting on the dryer. Like yeah. none of us has normal. We have no, what no. we experience. <laughs> you know, we have fact, what we I would experience. say, yeah. you know, if, if Jeremy, we were to normalize anything, it would be that everybody's got their stuff and that stuff affects your day to day in in seemingly unconscious ways, mm -hmm. you know, why are, you know, is someone having the same challenges over and over and over again? Well, you probably like, if you're, if you recognize those patterns, you know, like, this isn't ideal. This isn't what I want. I, I feel like, you know, 
introspection or working with someone that can help explore that is probably going to be incredibly valuable, incredibly Ab valuable. Absolutely, because you, you hit it, right? When we do the introspection, but we're introspecting, we're looking inside, we still have our own filters, our own belief systems that are impacting. So we didn't get the result. Well, maybe I just don't deserve that. Well, maybe that's just my culture. You know, I'm Irish in my history, so I just have to be a drunk and I have to get angry mm -hmm. and pick fights. Okay, but the, the, the Irish also saved Western civilization because the monks wrote down a whole bunch of stuff during the Dark Ages and preserved it. So if you're going to take the bad, you got to take the good too. You can't just like pick the one side and beat yourself up because then you have to delete, like that's not a fair assessment. That's why it's helpful, somebody like me on the outside, to help remind you of your resources and your resourcefulness. And be like, hold on a second. Yeah, that part's okay and true, but this other part over here you're deleting, that's also true. And yeah. we need that that resource. We need that mirror to reflect back because sometimes we just delete stuff because, well, I just don't deserve that. Well, that's just not me. You know, well, I, I'm, I'm a perfectionist. Like people will argue for their limitations because their identity, their sense of self is like locked into their story. And so sometimes you need someone on the outside to just kind of poke you and be like, yo, dude, do that. Like make, make try this, adjust this. What does this do for you? And that's it. You just a little bit of tweaks. See, in my model of the world, nobody's broken unless you got like body parts sticking out and then you got to fix that. <laughs> but internally, like you're not broken, you're not damaged. Yeah, you may be running a process that's not getting you where you want to go. Okay, let's see what we can do with that because I'm not going to make you wrong. I'm, you're allowed to feel what you feel. And what do you want to feel? Okay, cool. Well, what's getting in the way? Okay, cool. What if we could remove that? Let's just remove it because it's a belief. Yeah. So um, explain, Jeremy, how you work with folks and, and how, I mean, obviously, you, listen, I, you know, you you went through a, a, a journey of discovery for yourself to kind of learn a lot of these things where you're able to take, you know, a negative or bad experience, whatever it may be. And it might be, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that happened in childhood. It could be something mm -hmm. that happened, you know, uh, an experience that happened a couple of years ago. Right, but it's still it's showing up in in un, unhelpful ways, and 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 that's something that you you know you'd like to rewire that a little bit. And so, Jeremy, how do you do that? Well, we start with just we have a conversation about what's going on, right? And I don't say why; I say what. What's going on? What do you want? What's what's the impact? Where are you? Where do you want to be? What do you feel? What do you think? What do you believe is the limit? Um, What's, what's the barrier? Because that helps me to understand like your model of the world and how you've created your internal reality. And whatever you've done in your life that's gotten you to this point, it, it's worked. But where do you want to go next? You may need different tools. It's kind of like in the kitchen and you're trying to reach the top shelf and you're a little shorter. So you get a chair to stand on. That could work. But then later you're like, oh, I got to get on the roof. Oh, I remember I used a chair to elevate myself. Let me go use that. And then you go outside and you put the chair in the backyard and you climb on the roof using the chair, but the chair is not tall enough. And then you yell and scream at the chair or you yell and scream at yourself. And it's like, nah, just get a ladder, different tool, different job. So then you get used to the ladder. This is so simple. It's so much more powerful than a chair. I'm going to use it all the time. And now you're trying to use a 15 foot ladder and a nine foot kitchen. you got holes in your ceiling, right? So it's like figuring out what's the appropriate tool. I don't like really the word right or wrong. I don't like you know, yeah. true. It's just what's the appropriate tool to get you where you want to go. And then we figure that out. And so a lot of the work I do is just clarifying, finding the couple of key things that are in the way. And then we just remove them. We have a conversation. I'm a, I'm a certified hypnotherapist as, as well as I have master trainings in neurolinguistic programming and neuro strategies. So I can do some really powerful change work very quickly, like decades of stuff into like minutes, days, we pivot your belief system so it gets you kind of out of that existential hole. And then we got to manage some of the ripples because you've got a momentum behaving a certain way up to this point. We pivot you now. Cool. But you're still possibly going to have a momentum in past history. So how do we start to clean that up? So mm -hmm. like I have a, a couple of guys I'm working with, their marriages were in bad places, taking each other for granted, expectation, losing the passion, becoming roommates. And you know, their wife comes to them and says, yeah, I, still, I, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I just don't feel the spark. And it's like, okay, well, you know, he's like, but I, I'm doing the job and I'm providing and I'm taking care of. And it's like, yeah, you guys are fantastic roommates. And it's a wonderful business opportunity for some woman 
but the woman you're with wants passion. She wants the joie de vie. She wants to feel the juice of life. And you're so turnstile, you've become a plow horse. When you guys first met, you were a racehorse. So what were you doing then? How are you thinking and feeling? Yeah, but I got kids now. And I've got, and they start to argue for me, argue with me for where they are and why they're stuck. I'm like, all those things are well and good. So how do we create the synthesis? How do we create the both and? It doesn't have to be you're either a plow horse or a racehorse. What if you were like a Maserati and now you're like amazing something completely different? Oh, I hadn't thought of it like that. Yeah. So we change metaphors. We change like what we call references. And now you have new impact, new story. And it gets exciting for you. And as you get exciting and you're feeling more passionate in your life, it naturally starts to move into your marriage and you start to learn to read her signals and what she says and what she means, which can be separate. And you get clarity there. And now you can connect to her and you can light her up. And all of a sudden, the spark is back. Because it wasn't that she didn't love you. She didn't love the interaction between the two of you. Cool. Well, there's limiting beliefs. There's fears. Well, if I'm too much of this, I'm a dad and I have to provide. And, mm -hmm. and I got to make the money. And I got to, and I got to, and I got to. And, but there's no room for his wife. There's no room for passionate. There's no room for date night. There's no room for pursuing her. Then, yeah, she's going to feel like a housewife. She's going to feel like property. She's going to feel like she's just, you know, cattle doing a thing. Yeah, she's not going to want to stay there. She's going to want more. Cool. The more you appreciate that, respect that, thank her for her honesty. And her, you're right, babe. I want a divorce. I want to divorce the past. I love you. I'm sticking with you because you're awesome. But I want to divorce my past behavior and I want to re rededicate us to living at that next level. And once you've done that and the ownership, like, and then you follow through, she can lean into you because you've connected to her and shown up for her in a way nobody ever has. And that makes you more powerful, more attractive. And we can do that. It doesn't take you know, years of counseling, years of therapy, literally that could just be, I've done it in as short as a few hours over a weekend. I did an in-person intervention with a couple and within about six hours, we repatterned a bunch of stuff between the two of them, got past the fears, past the, but what if she's like my mom? What if he's like my dad? They're both mm -hmm. in fear. We got through that. And, but, but he's not your dad and she's not your mom. You're your own people. And there's parts of it, but there's other parts that aren't. So let's expand on those parts. And just helping to, to get the focus. So it's a lot of like conversation, but it's like, oh, that makes sense now. And like, like all these little tumblers inside, like the little locks, they just kind of like click. And then, ah, oh, literally you feel it. And it's like, ooh, I got tingly. That made sense. I got this. Yeah. And they elevate. Yeah. Jeremy, what are some things that we can do to maybe be more aware that there is a connection? Uh, between maybe it's someone that always undervalues themselves. Uh, it could be maybe they, um, oh boy, you see this a lot, right? Where they they get in their own way and they, uh, they you know, it's like they could be, they could land a, a, another really, really great sale, but for whatever reason, what's what's the word I'm thinking of where they get in their own way? They self-sabotage, self self right? Mm -hmm. And it's so uh subtle like how our brain does that right and when there's no need for that you you can live in complete abundance right and um you know it's uh you know it, but you know i think a lot of it stems from you know our belief that we can overcome and, and we can persevere and we can make, you know, cause you know, we all have good and we all have bad situations, but you know, what we're talking about, I think again, are the, okay, but you know, do you keep getting fired? Uh, do you keep missing out on those really big sales? Do you keep missing out on like your, your, your revenue numbers are just where they should be. Right. And, but yet you feel like you could, but, what is it, right? And and it's what I'm asking uh, very long-windedly <laughs> is back <laughs> to the beginning when I was talking about awareness. How yes. can we say, oh, wait, maybe Jeremy's onto something because yeah. dot, dot, dot. Like, how can we connect those dots? Yeah. yeah, so you the biggest, most important thing to pay attention to is this this thought or this feeling, even the language around the word deserves right? What do I deserve? Do I deserve that? Did I earn that? Did I blah, blah, blah? Because you, you can start to hear when you, when you really, you know, you're beating yourself up about something, the language begins to tell you how you're sequencing yourself. Well, I have to achieve in order to be happy. I have to do X and Y and Z, and then I deserve to be blah, blah, blah. And that's totally not true. 
Yeah. You could just you could just be happy and then go achieve. Well, no, I couldn't do that. That's too easy. Okay. Well, that's a belief system, isn't it? So that's the, the 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 wiring that we get as kids that we all struggle with at times, right? Because it's like, who am I to be X and Y and Z? Mm. So you're listening for that thought. You're listening for that pushback. When you're arguing for your limitations and why you deserve to fail, wait a minute. Who's telling me that? Because is that what I really truly believe in my heart of hearts? Or is that something I picked up somewhere and I've just bought into it? Right? Go back to I don't believe people are broken. But what if you're just running bad code? Like a computer will do what you tell it. You tell it to do something illogical, it'll break, not because the computer's stupid or doesn't work right. It's because the instructions don't make sense. And the computer goes, bleh. So sometimes we go, bleh, and we got to like use those opportunities, not beat ourselves up and, oh, I'm so stupid. What's wrong with me? It's like, well, you're going to get an answer. What's wrong with you versus what could I improve? What could I yeah. learn? How can I change this? How can I stop repeating this? Those are much more powerful questions. And we yeah. all struggle with it because – we're not fully aware of what we're doing to ourselves. We see the pattern, like the ripples after the fact. So it's the more you can catch yourself noticing, how are you right before that moment of impact? What was going on? What were you thinking? What were you feeling? What were you telling yourself? Because your stories hypnotize you and your family stories, your generational stories, they hypnotize us into a sequence, good, bad, or sideways. It's, it's just the way of the things. You could use that to limit, but you could use that to expand, right? We've all heard the the meme, like, you know, bossy little girls tell them they have leadership potential. It's like, why does it have to be attached to girls? But but the idea of somebody speaking up, what they think, what they see, what they know, they want to make an impact. They want to offer value. Cool. Now, how do we receive that? How do we filter that? How do we process that? That takes a little bit of training, a little bit of sensitivity. So I've got a kid, you know, younger kids are egocentric. They're all about themselves because that's all they know. And so they barge in and they blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, we as the adults and blah, 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 and stamp them down. And you're, 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 we, we, we do this. Well, then we create pressure that's going to come out sideways. And then we get all this weird behavior out of them. Hmm. By us putting them under pressure, we may have created some of that challenge ourselves because they just don't have the language when they're young to speak up and say, well, I was thinking this. I didn't mean to be so loud, but I was really excited. It meant a lot to me. So we have to do the context. And as you do that for your kids, right, this is where a lot of parents have a, ch a chance for themselves. As you're working with your kids, engaging with your kids, it's a way to filter back to yourself too and go, wait a minute, how was I raised? Is that what I really wanted? Versus, well, it was what my parents did to me. It was good enough for me. I turned out, okay, I'm going to do it to you too. But mm. did you thrive? Did you love it or did it limit? And yeah. if it limited, why continue it? Uh, Jeremy, can I ask you about resilience? Um, so sometimes, um, you know, maybe somebody experiences uh, a setback professionally or in their relationship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not to address, you know, maybe a chemical psychological, I don't want to get too deep down into that rabbit hole. So more generally, um, you know, how can we be more resilient when something bad happens so we can kind of bounce out of that maybe a little bit more effective do you have any tools or and again that that, that may be a 30 minute uh answer but just <laughs> generally i don't know if there's any best practice or something that that you yeah. recommend to your clients you work with that that you think works pretty well oh yeah it's actually a concept i stole from dan kennedy because he did it in one of his trainings and it was brilliant he said, to be successful in life, right, entrepreneur, parent, doesn't matter the context. To be successful at anything, you've got to be able to do two things simultaneously. Number one, you've got to be a long-term optimist. I know in the long term, it's all going to work out. It's all going to mm -hmm. happen. It's all going to whatever. And then you have to be a short-term pessimist. Every day is going to suck. Every day is going to have a challenge or a difficulty or a pain point or, you know, eat the frog. Every day is going to have that. And so if you, if you can balance those two, it's much easier to be resilient and not take things so personally because it's like, well, this is just part of the process. Sometimes we got to learn what not to do to figure out what to do. How many people on the Forbes 400 list have filed bankruptcy? So they messed up, filed bankruptcy, lost everything, and they're on the Forbes 400, 400 richest people in the world. Like, what are they doing? Success leaves clues. So like sometimes we overreach and, and we go too far and we don't get the result we thought we wanted or that we thought we deserved, maybe that's an opportunity to learn 
pivot, change our standards, change our expectations and our boundaries, and then show up, play the game again, and then we can get our result. So resilience is partially a belief system. Partially, it's just a practice. It's a, it's a muscle that you flex. Um, you know, I've blown a lung twice. And the day I was in the hospital 11 days the first time, the night I got out of the hospital, I went and taught classes. I could barely stand, but it was like, I need to be in, in my energy. I need to be in my element because I've been 11 days just sitting here. And so being in that space and was it the greatest class I've ever taught? No, but for me and for my students, it was to show you can take a hit and a pretty big one and keep driving forward. I didn't push myself because I wasn't going to go back to the hospital, <laughs> but it by, but it's that idea of there's something greater than this moment. The last 11 days I've been on my butt and taking medicine and doing all this stuff. That's not who I really am. That right. was a moment. I am something bigger and yeah. greater and I'm here to play. Similarly, when somebody, you know, what somebody's opinion of you is also not you. I remember listening to Wayne Dyer and he said, you know, one day I got two letters and, and one letter was like, Wayne blah, and just tore into him, right? And said he's mm -hmm. Charlotte and blah, blah, blah. It's a bunch of negative stuff. Right. And he said, that's not me. That's, you know, that's their, that's their experience, but that's not me, right? And then he, at the same time, he got a letter that was just gushing and glowing and, oh, you changed my life. You did all this others, you know, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And he said, same test. That's not me, mm -hmm. you know? And Correct. so we, 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 you know, this idea of, you know, the good and bad out there, because that might be part of the negative thing, right? I don't do yeah. well with negative feedback. I just, I know that, right? I, I tend right. to be, um, it's really important for me to make sure that number one, kind of an always integrity, that's number one. Uh, mm -hmm. Number two, um, you know, I never like disappointing somebody. Like that's, right. that probably bothers me at least from my perception, maybe not, but I think it bothers me more than the average person. Uh, but then again, people don't necessarily talk about this. <laughs> so, right. Um, right. Well, but you're a person of integrity and you're a person of sincerity and, and you want to be genuine. Like you're on stage, off stage, you want them to be the same so that yeah. you're just, you're just Josh. You're not a production or a business or a product. You're just you. And, and the off stage, on stage is the same guy. And so when you're offering a moment of impact to someone and it's received askew, like, like I'm the same way. Like it hurts my heart. I'm like, oh, I did that wrong. Like I take a lot of ownership. Like, oh, I could have, I could have communicated differently. Oh, I was too this. I was, oh, okay. But I, I immediately take it feedback as the breakfast of champions because whatever resistance they're giving me, it's, it's the same thing I learned in Kung Fu, right? 25 years Kung Fu master. Um, when you get hit, it's because you were open. You made a mistake because that's all you can mm -hmm. control is your mistakes. You can't control what they get right. So when someone's giving you feedback, positive or negative, that's right. wow. cool. Yeah. Because right. because I'm, I'm a ladder, right? I'm here to help people get to a place. And when I was a younger coach, I put myself in the process with them. And then I took it personal. And I like, you know, it hurt me when they were blah, blah, blah. And I've worked with some clients in some really bad situations. And I don't put myself into their story. Like, I'm not exhausted after I work with them. I'm energized because I'm out of the hole. I can find more resources and I can help you rediscover your own resourcefulness. I don't jump in the hole with you and now, oh, that's so bad. And oh man, that hurts so much. Like I don't put their emotions on. Mm. I, I sympathize and I empathize. And I'm like, that's a lot to be carrying. I mad, mad kudos and respect to you for what you've put been through and where you are now. And then I'm focused on what we call the compelling future. Like what's the thing that's going to pull them forward and motivate themselves consistently to like drive forward. If, if life is a grind and life is a push, that's exhausting. But if yeah. it's like you feel this, you feel this, this upwelling inside of you, it's your natural state to X, Y, Z and you're crushing business and your marriage is amazing and your kids are fantastic and your fitness is wonderful, but it's a, it's an upwelling inside of you. You truly can have it all, but not all at the exact same moment and all the exact same way. Cause like time takes, you know, you can't, I can't do a thing and work out and eat, the right food all at the same time. You got to sequence your day, sequence your moments, but you can truly have it all. It's just getting clear on what that actually means. What is have it all to you versus what the world tells you? Well, if I'm not a billionaire, why am I even doing this? This is stupid. It's like, well, 
I've been around billionaires. I, I dated a billionaire's sister and like not all of them are abundance mindset, wonderful people. A lot of them are living in reaction and they're actually living in scarcity and they're not sure. who they yeah. present to be in the public. Yeah, That's not yeah. something I look at and ascribe to. I look at that and go, wow, thank you for showing me a different way of being. And I'm not here to judge them because that's not my place. I don't judge anybody, but I evaluate. I don't want to live like that. Mm. And I'm cool with it because for a long time I wanted to be a billionaire. It's like, yeah, no, I don't want that anymore. Isn't that interesting when you let go of that, like how freeing that is? Um, you know, oh I think gosh. for a lot of us who are, you know, business leaders or entrepreneurs, you know, it's like we're always living in the future. Um, and mm -hmm. I think when you let go of that and say, you know what, I'm living life right now. Um, yeah. This is what life is. It's what I'm experiencing now. Um, Jeremy, I want to have you share just a little bit about, um, so when you go to jeremyroadruck.com slash wealth, and again, you'll see that link right on the screen here. Um, the Wounds to Wealth Masterclass, can, can, it's free, sign up. Mm -hmm. Not a yep. big sales. It's not a sales thing. It's um, you deliver a lot of value uh, yes. in in it, but you do explain how to you know how you could potentially work with you, right? Um, can can you explain what you teach in this masterclass? So basically, we're gonna cover, really it's the three the three keys you need to like get where you want to be. Like we talk about next level. Next level means to you. Well, you gotta mm -hmm. think at that next level and you got to feel at that next level and you got to like operate at that next level but it's hard to do that when you're not there yet right if it's safe to do so close your eyes and imagine a color you've never seen before you can't because <laughs> it's like uh and even if you could you can't explain it to anyone because it's well it's kind of like this but it's not like that there's no amount of words you can give us that will know exactly what you saw so it's helpful if you just have somebody at that next level who can just like you copy, you model, and, and they can facilitate getting you there because they know what it's like, they can get you there. So we break down you know, really what is wealth, like on all dimensions, because we can talk about wealth, we can talk about rich. Is that the same thing or is it different? And so let's, let's do that. And then how do you embody that next level? I take you through a quick little exercise. I do it with you right on camera. Like, here's how to do it. Hold this and this is how you're going to feel. It's going to impact rolling forward. And then I talked about the idea of scale and scope because, you know, there's quantity and then there's quality and those are two different animals. And so the masterclass is designed like it's just it's just bang, 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 bang. I don't even really introduce myself in the start. You know, you and I have both been on those webinars. It's like 90 minutes. It's 45 minutes of here who I am and I'm so great and blah, 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 no, no, blah, blah. Let's just blah. get into some meat. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like 10 minutes of content and then another like half an hour of pitching. And I'm like, oh, my uh, God. I, I, I'm too decisive for that. Like when I pivot, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Yeah. Like I, I want to make impact. When it comes to coaching, I want my clients to fire me as fast as possible and not really fire me, but just like the need for me is gone because they got to their destination. Yeah. So like, like I said, I'm a ladder. You got on the roof. Good. You don't need to carry the ladder anymore. So the masterclass is designed to really hit in, in 30 minutes. We're just going to run right through. I talk about like five, five guidelines, to just expand your life. And then we get right into the keys. Here's what key number one, here's key number two, here's key number three. Um, and then I share a couple of stories. Uh, um, I think I shared one story in the, in the masterclass with a client I worked with and the change in his life in less than 90 days, we, we, we covered his marriage and uh, we helped to expand his business. And um, they're now trying for child number three where when we first got together, maybe his marriage is going to end. He doesn't know. So I talked about that a little bit as well. Yeah. Awesome. So that is at jeremyroadruck.com forward slash wealth. The URL is right on the screen and might be in the post, depending on how and when you're seeing this post or whatever, um, you should be able to find it. But um, yeah, Jeremy, thank you so much for putting this on. Um, thank you so much for addressing this subject. Um, there are a lot of great um, folks out there that, you know, they're doing the best they can with what they have. Um, you know, the reality is we have, we all have so much more in common than what mm -hmm. separates us. And the themes that we're talking about here, very common. <laughs> yeah. These, yeah. these are part of those themes that we are all connected. We've, you yeah. know, we, we've all had stuff. <laughs> Right. And, and it doesn't have to be big, huge, you know, crazy yeah. people came into my house, my house burned down. It doesn't have to be big stuff. Yeah. It can be as simple as this meant so much to me and my mom, my dad, they had to work. They missed this thing and it's impacted me and I've never really let yep. it go my whole life. Oh, like, totally. like it can be just 
you know, your parents loved you and gave you everything, but there was just a mismatch on this one or two key areas that makes you feel like, ah, oh, I must be worthless. Like, like they just didn't make me a priority when yeah. to them, safe home, food, heat, like that stuff was like they were providing and connecting and, and really trying to love you the best they knew how. Yeah. So even that, just, just that mismatch can cause lifetime self-worth issues. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be big, crazy things. Yep. That's the, yep. that's the real unfortunate piece is we all have limiting beliefs and we all have limiting things that hold us back that we could change and like quickly. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh, so mom and dad, if you're watching, love you. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, Jeremy, thank you so much uh, for, for taking this time and talking about this subject. Hopefully we've, we've inspired some folks to uh, take some action and say, you know what? Yeah, mm -hmm. let's take a look at some of my patterns, some of my thinking and so forth. And, and maybe we can uncover a few things and, and kind of, you know, chart a little bit of a different direction and how I normally react or respond to certain situations. And that would be just my exactly. hope. Thank you for making this your mission. Um, Cause um, you know, it's, you, there's a lot of folks out there that, uh, that, that could use a bit of that. So again, jeremyrodruck.com forward slash wealth. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, Josh, thank you again. This has been a lot of fun. 